okay, so continuing the quick unscripted reviews for the uh, end of year stuff, because just want to get them in under the wire. So let's talk about Wonka. Uh, Timothy Chalamet, who at this point uh, is an actor who is more interesting for spelling his name that way than he is for anything he's really done on screen, famously has said that uh, he will uh, never play a superhero because uh, an actor friend of his, this is a story he at one point loved to tell on uh, Junket for his uh, films, put an arm around him and said that the way to have success in his career would be to uh, not, uh, no drinking, no drugs, and uh, don't play a superhero. And he apparently took that very, very seriously uh, right before he signed on to uh, make a Willy Wonka origin story for Warner Brothers which is, of course, completely different for some reason. And you gotta work out that uh, bold artistic statement that is made by the Willy Wonka origin story, which is Warner Brothers still technically owns the rights to that one song everyone knows from the Gene Wilder version, but at this point at least acknowledges that it's pointless to try and actually remake the movie. So at the very least, the nicest thing that I can say about Wonka is that at least it's not a remake, and the nicest thing that I can say about Timothy Chalamet being in it is that they seem to have cast him because he's an actor who looks like he was kind of born in goofy period costuming, and uh, therefore, because he's doing it, at least I'm not watching another Eddie Redmayne performance. And also, at least it's nice of him that he uh, has the uh, security in his own uh, abilities, or at least uh, stardom, future career, etc. When Hugh Grant shows up playing an Oompa Loompa, a shrunken down digitally uh, in the, uh, the orange makeup and such, Chalamet is at least lacking in uh, egoism that uh, he happily seeds the screen and just lets this much, much more interesting uh, actor with just tons of uh, tons of chops uh, politely blow him right off the screen with the power of actual movie star charisma. Like, this movie really kind of sucks, uh, but Hugh Grant, in, in the uh, fairly small number of scenes and screen time that he shows up to do this bit in, shows up having really, really strong Christopher Plummer in Sound of Music, uh, good actor, who feels that he is above this and does not want to be here energy, but is pouring that into the character and just exudes uh, a great, real, I'm going to work anyway uh, charm, the, the marked difference between a, uh, a brand new, uh, you know, try hard young actor uh, who is just not selling it, can barely hold up the screen, and Hugh Grant digitally comped into a scene, not even really trying, uh, just acting circles around him. Uh, if only the, the movie was A, that entertaining on purpose uh, in those scenes, and B, uh, any good at all when it's not there. So yeah, so this is the origin of uh, Willy Wonka, uh, or rather it's a uh, weirdly uninteresting and also weirdly overcomplicated story, sort of a Dickensian satire of capitalism with uh, chocolate standing in for money, and also because uh, no Hollywood movie can actually do a proper satire of capitalism anymore, can't make up its mind whether or not uh, the uh, chocolate is good or bad, whether money is good or bad, or what system it's actually satirizing. Uh, right to the point that its main joke is that the villains are the uh, leaders of a chocolate cartel, which the movie repeatedly uh, says out loud in very specific words as though the concept of a chocolate cartel is a really, really funny thing, which leads me to believe that no one at any point in the making of this movie ever like did a Google search to find out that the chocolate cartel is like a real thing that exists in the world and is actually sort of a not insubstantial geopolitical problem. I mean, like, look it up. That's a that's a real thing. No, look it up. The, the cocoa cartel is a real thing. They've got, like, stationary. It would be a much more interesting movie than this. But anyway, what they kind of settle on for their satire of capitalism with chocolate is that Willy Wonka is a tech startup disruptor, but with candy who moves into a uh, nondescript uh, quasi-European town 
where he needs to get himself a chocolate shop, selling miraculous magical candy and knocking out the bigger, less interesting competition, but they won't let them because chocolate cartel. He also gets weirdly pushed into indentured servitude, which he can kind of escape from whenever he wants to, but he chooses not to so that they can do a whole other storyline where he saves other people because that makes him more sympathetic. He also seems to have magic powers, but it only works sometimes, and it's also sometimes mechanical magic or sleight of hand, and the movie's a musical, and since they're doing the sometimes the musical scenes are fantasy and sometimes they're reality, it's not really clear whether the magical stuff is happening for real or fantasy, and it changes tone, the ability for the fantasy stuff to influence reality at random, and if you're getting the sense that this feels both very lazy and also expensively over designed, it, uh, it kind of does. It basically feels a lot like the Paddington movies if all of the stuff that shouldn't work but does in those just plain didn't work here. And what a surprise, the maker of Paddington is the maker of this movie. So if you can imagine the Paddington movies with all the fun sucked out and the adorable bear replaced by an obnoxious Timothy Chalamet performance, that's basically this. I mean, I won't say I didn't like the art design in certain scenes and there's a murderer's row of good character actors that they've lined up to help take care of the whole Chalamet really doesn't have conventional movie star charisma, but we keep casting him as a movie star because people think he's good-looking problem. And, you know, let's face it, the reason to make a Willy Wonka movie of any kind, as far as Warner Brothers is concerned, is so you can play pure imagination on the soundtrack, and the scene where they eventually get to do that is well-realized. And at that point, I kind of went, you know what, okay, this works well enough, it's almost worth the movie. And then as I was walking out of the theater, I immediately thought about the rest of the movie and went, ah, they almost got me, but no, this still sucks. And I know that this is like one of those pointless complaints that comes up with every movie that tries to have some sort of message to it about this specific thing. If you're going to do a business satire as the plot of your big budget Hollywood blockbuster four quadrant IP remake movie, maybe find a different thing to make the central point of your satire then the hero is an original thinker who comes up with new ideas and the bad guys just want to recycle and make bland things because there's no way that the fact that that's exactly what you've made, the bad guy thing, the bland recycled thing, isn't going to be crushingly obvious and the stink of it is just going to get all over everything. It always happens with this. Not to be cliche about it, but it left a bad taste in my mouth. I give it nothing but I suppose 4 out of 10 would be the generous thing in the spirit of the holidays.